Hi, I'm Kelly at Book and Paper Arts, and today I'm going to show you how you can make your own ink out of walnuts. Handmade walnut ink. It is not difficult, it's uh, crazy messy, but it's not hard to do, and it is very satisfying. You can then, you can just make your own ink out of plants that you can then use for painting, for drawing, for lettering, and for mark making in your pages and other mixed media work. If you like journal arts, altered books, and vintage books, paper, and ephemera, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and be sure and turn on the notifications and you will have more of them in your life. Now let's go make some ink. Hi. We interrupt this regularly scheduled programming for this important announcement. This video is glitchy. At home in my studio, I have a dedicated space for uh, making videos. But I'm not at home. I'm on holiday in France, and all I have to work with is a bendy portable tripod and a kitchen table. So, but I, I knew that I was going to make this walnut ink anyway. And I thought, well, it's a pretty good opportunity to show how it's done in case anybody out there wants to do the same. So I spent about two days making this video and I uh, was getting ready to edit and post it when I realized that it is glitchy. Uh, specifically, uh, due to the nature of the uh, bendy tripod and stuff, sometimes my hands are north and south, and sometimes they're east and west, and it looks silly. So I... Uh, knew that I couldn't do it again because I had already made the ink and uh, boiled the, the walnuts and recycled them and uh, so I had a good cry and then I just said fine I'm not gonna post I'm just gonna pretend I never mentioned the words walnut ink I took a long walk and while I was walking I realized that maybe I am not giving you out there the benefit of the doubt. That you have a sense of humor and a sense of the silly. And maybe you still wanna make ink and the, the, the stuff is really good, it's just that my hands are strange. So, without further ado, I am gonna post. I'm going to post and thank you for being patient and having a sense of humor and a sense of the silly. We now resume our regular scheduled programming. First, you're going to need your walnuts. I found these out while I was walking in the woods, in, so I just foraged them. You might find them in a park. Um, just keep your eyes uh, on the ground, see if you can find them. What actually gives the color here is not the nut itself, not the fruit or the nut. It is this hull or husk that is around the walnut itself. And that's what's gonna give the color that makes the ink. Um, I have seen recipes for using green husks, but I've never tried it. So I would, if I had green ones, I would probably just let them, put them, set, set them aside until they turn brown and mushy. How many? Depends on how much ink you want to make. I just got a bag full and now I'm going to cover them with water and get started. You definitely want to use a pot that you do not cook food in. Uh, these walnuts will stain like crazy, and you might get away with it, but it's really better to have cookware that is dedicated just to ink making. Now, I went to a thrift store a couple of days and got this nice big cooking pot for next to nothing. So I don't have to worry about using the good pots and pans here in the apartment that I'm staying in.
It's also important that you wear rubber gloves. I don't have any, so I'm gonna do what I always say in my videos, use what you got. And what I've got is a crumpled up uh, shopping bag here. And I'm just gonna do that to protect my hands because believe me, this stuff will stain anything and that means you. Also be sure that you are wearing old clothes and or an apron because if it gets on anything that you're wearing, it's going to be walnut uh, ink dyed forever, probably. So be sure that you wear old clothes and some rubber gloves. After you cook the walnuts, you're gonna need something to strain your uh, walnut mush through. I'm gonna start with this colander for a couple of passes and then after that, I'm gonna use these coffee filters. You can also use um, an old t-shirt, cheesecloth, or even old stockings. But you're gonna need something a little bit finer to do your straining in. You're gonna want something to put your ink in. This is a little jam jar that I'm gonna be using. I got these cute, cute bottles at, um, at a flea market the other day. They're perfect for ink. At home, I also use uh, spice jars. Empty spice jars are a perfect size for ink. You want, because this ink is, is vegetal, it's, it's made from a plant, it will uh, have a tendency to want to, to mold in time. So you want something to help stop that or slow it down. I'm going to use a few, about five whole cloves in my little jar of ink, and that will keep it, preserve it. You can also use a teaspoon of alcohol, uh, a teaspoon of vodka, rubbing alcohol, or even a few drops of wintergreen essential oil will do the trick. You can also just keep it in the fridge forever. Finally, and this is optional, you might want to add some gum arabic i'll explain about this at the end again it's optional uh, but i like it in my ink so i've covered these with water they're floating to the top so it's a little hard to tell but when i push them down which is when they start cooking they will stop floating and they'll go to the bottom Pretty much just have enough liquid here to cover the tops of the walnuts. I'm going to put this on the stove and see what happens. Now the walnuts are cooking away. I'm just going to let them simmer. When I say simmer, I mean teeny, teeny, tiny little bubbles, just barely at the boil. I'm going to leave this for about three hours checking on it every 20 minutes or so to see if it needs a little water added to give it a good stir and then just let it cook. After three hours, I'll do a swatch and see if the color is dark enough and we'll go from there. So I'm just gonna put a lid on this, let it simmer for three hours, checking every 20 minutes or so. This has cooked down to a sludge. You can see um, when it simmers that there is plenty of liquid, plenty of ink in there, but it's more sludge than uh, water. I tested the color by dipping in some watercolor paper. And I'm very happy with how that looks now. So I'm going to go ahead and strain it and drain it and move to the next step. For my first straining, I just poured all of the nuts and sludge through this colander with pretty big holes into another container. And this is what is left. It is almost like a light syrup. You can see how it's coating the bottom here. If I was not happy with the color at this point, 
I would probably put it back on the hob and let it cook down uh, to a third or half of this. But like I said, I'm pretty happy with the, the, the depth of the color and so I'm just gonna uh, stop cooking it. I do, however, need to strain it some more because again, it's vegetable, it's vegetal matter and it is, hi, I know you can see me in the camera. It is, um, that first straining is just not going to be enough. So what I'm going to do is I've got this coffee filter that I've put over a jug. And I am just going to slowly start pouring a little, maybe like a half cup at a time, into the coffee filter and let it drain. It may take a while. If I had cheesecloth, I would use that. It's got bigger uh, holes in the mesh. But uh, if you're using a coffee filter or a tea filter, just let it take as long as it's going to take. You'll get there. Now I have my walnut ink. I got about uh, three jelly jars, maybe a little more. And I have to say that while I was straining, the final straining with the coffee filters, I had to use several coffee filters because one, especially at the beginning, they just got too sludgy and uh, did not drain well. So I just kept using more. I got plenty of coffee filters. What I'm gonna do now, before I start working with this, is I'm going to put in about five whole cloves. This will inhibit um, molding, which again is inevitable in a plant-based ink. You can also, as I said earlier, you can use um, wintergreen essential oil or a splash of alcohol or spirits such as vodka. And uh, if you, I sometimes keep mine in the fridge and that way you, you really will just be able to keep it forever. I'm probably going to take some of this ink and put it in some adorable smaller jars and give them away as gifts and then leave myself with one nice hefty jelly jar of ink to last me until this time next year. And this will be plenty. Finally, a few words about gum Arabic. This is optional. But if you try making your own ink and you find that you like making homemade inks, you probably want to invest in some. It's, uh, these are granules, but you can also get it in liquid form at a craft store or an art supply store or online. And what it is, it's a natural rosin. It can be used as a varnish, but in this case, it's, it's also used in ink making it's going to make your ink a bit more viscous and give it more slip. So you don't have to use it, but I do like the extra oomph it gives mine. So if you've got some, give it a try. Now that we have the ink, a couple of ideas. First, whatever you do, do not put this in a fountain pen. Even if you strained it 30 times, there would be enough vegetal matter left in there to clog your feed. Don't do it. You can, however, use it with a dip pen or, of course, with a brush. And you can just use it for coloring. Also, for mark making which is one of my favorite ways. If you're doing a journal page, it's gonna give you a lot of drama with your mark making. I actually have a video that shows a lot of different techniques for using handmade, handmade uh, plant-based inks in your work. And I'm gonna to link to that in the text box below this video. So if you want more technique ideas, go check that out. 
You can also add some water to your ink, which is what I've done here. This is two, part, two parts water to one part ink, and I can now make a wash. So if I wanted to add a big background or some contrast, don't be afraid to mix this up with some water and see what different values that you get with your ink and water wash mix. I hope that this gives you some ideas for working with walnuts, if you've got some, and making your own walnut ink. Please stay tuned because in the coming weeks, I'm going to have other videos about other plant-based and botanical inks that you can make yourself using everyday objects you might already have around your kitchen. Please check out the text below this uh, video to see what's happening here at Book and Paper Arts. Also, please, if you've got a question, if you've got some feedback, let me know in the comments below. I love to compare notes. Until next time, happy making.